There was a study by World Wildlife Fund that looked at vertebrate animals from 1970 to 2012 or so. And at 42 years, on average, there are 58% fewer individual vertebrates in the wild than there were in 1970. I do think not considering the chemicals we use and not testing them for safety is probably the greatest health concern and public health issue we face. This problem is as big and, and maybe even more fast acting than the climate problem. We're seeing precipitous decline in human male fertility, same kind of decline that we're seeing in the fish in the rivers, etc. We can reproduce these effects with chemicals and on lab species. Uh, we know a lot about it and we're not, we're not really doing very much about it. There's this notion of echo health that ultimately, even though you might think there's no effect of contaminating our water or contaminating our plants or animals, what goes around proverbially does come around. The One Health idea is that human, animal, and environmental health are all connected. And that's something that really resonates with us at Phipps. We're very much interested in understanding how human health and environmental health and all the other species as well is all connected. I think there are a couple of key concepts to make sure you understand about chemicals and health. And they, they seem to violate common sense. We all know that the dose makes the poison. The bigger the dose, the bigger the effect. Well, that's not true. Two decades of research into this issue right now tells us that low doses can cause big effects that can't be predicted from, the con from experiments with high doses. They can be the, exactly the opposite. All of our regulatory testing of, for safety, how the FDA, the EPA, those agencies determine what's safe and what's not, they're based upon a, a false assumption. And so the answers that they've been getting for a century are very possibly wrong. And so when you hear the FDA say, oh, it's safe by our standards, those standards, at least several of them, particularly the one that the dose makes the poison, it's 400 years old uh, and it's out of date. We put together a series of expert panels a few years ago to look at the evidence for which uh, chemicals had the, the strongest associations with adverse disease outcomes in human health. And what we then did was to uh, measure the number of conditions and cases of certain diseases that affect us and translate that into a human cost. We found that in, in Europe, the costs were on the order of 1.2% of Euro European GDP. In the United States, we found that the costs were even higher on the order of $340 billion. That's an annual cost in so far as exposures continue at current levels, or 2% of US GDP. We also have learned that diseases can be transmitted from one generation to the next with no changes in DNA sequence. It's a whole new field. It's called transgenerational inheritance of epigenetic changes. And that's a big problem. Um, the, the simplest description of it is that great-grandmother's exposure when she was pregnant can be manifest in great-grandson or great-granddaughter. You also can't ignore the value of controlled laboratory animal studies because whether it's rodents or frogs in my case, you can look at multiple generations and you can know, in my case for example, we've shown that this chemical atrazine which causes reproductive failure in males or sex reversal in females, um, two things happen across generations. One is you get selection for either resistance or sensitivity. And so you, the populations are changing with each generation of exposure. The animals that are successful and are passing their genes on have been affected, have been selected for. The other thing that more and more and more scientists are discovering over and over again is there are also so-called epigenetic effects. There are effects where you can have exposure in one generation and you still see effects in the next generation, even if they're not exposed. The big question, right, is that we're in this kind of intractable situation where we're just all walking around with hundreds of chemicals in our bodies. And what our research is doing is looking for tractable moments when we can possibly find ways to quantify the risks associated with these chemicals when there's still time to make changes and change that risk and kind of slowly walk backwards from the status quo.
The vast majority of the sustainability problems that we are experiencing appear to be related to our inability to enact our understanding of the fact that we are all um, linked. I think what's really at stake for all of us is our health. There's a lot of you know, canaries out there, you know, the frogs, the, the fish, some of the other animals that we've heard about throughout the conference that we know that there's toxic effects on some of these animals. It's happening to us too. And it's just taking longer. But if we don't reverse this, if we don't start addressing this, uh, it's gonna have severe implications on our children and our grandchildren. And um, that's, why we, that's why we need to act now.